Welcome to Staff Devotional this week. I'm Justin Allison, and uh, you're getting a, a, a dose of me again, and it won't happen next week, uh, but I was out on the mission trip and unable to record someone else this week, so you're going to get me again. Um, today, we are going to talk about um, Acts chapter 1. Uh, we're going to look at verse 7. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to remind you that we're going to have a, a weekly devotional by a staff member that's going to premiere each Wednesday morning at 745. Uh, so if you're seeing this later, you can just kind of set a, a reminder and you'll catch it then. Um, but that's when it'll publish. And we hope to have uh, several different staff members rotate through that uh, in the coming weeks. So without further ado, let's jump into Acts chapter 1, verse 7. And it says, uh, this this is in the end when Jesus is ascending uh, before the church has begun. Uh, Jesus says, the Father alone has the authority to set the dates and the times, and they are not for you to know. He's, he's answering a question about when the uh, when he's going to come back and, and when the end is going to happen. And he says, it's not for you to know. And then in verse 8, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and to the ends of the earth. And, uh, and I skipped Samaria, J- Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. So uh, one thing to note there about verse 8 is that this is given to the apostles before the Holy Spirit has come among, upon them. You and I live in a time uh, after that when we have the Holy Spirit uh, who guides us. So we are in this time when we are uh, God's witnesses uh, to tell people about God everywhere uh, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. That's where we are right now. That is our assignment uh, where we are right now in life and in kind of in the timeline of what's happening in God's kingdom. That's, That's where we are. And so as we think about that, and we kind of dig into what this means, um, Jerusalem, you might think of as, as, as our, our city, our school, our, um, our county, uh, our workplace. It's, it's that place that you frequent every single day. That's what Jerusalem corresponds to. These are people who would be familiar with Jerusalem. You and I are not familiar with Jerusalem. We are familiar with uh, for example, I'm familiar with Weatherford, been here for almost 20 years. And so this is my home base, my home region, and I'm supposed to be a witness in that area. And it can take place um, in a lot of different ways. What that means is that uh, the people that I encounter, uh, you know, through um, the neighborhood that I live in, the the soccer association where I coach my kids, um, my my daughter's volleyball team and those things, um, school, all of that. We want to represent Christ and and be an an example to those in our community of someone who believes in Jesus Christ, and that means that we're going to get to be witnesses, and and we want to try and be witnesses by sharing verbally our faith. Uh, a lot of times it starts before that with just being kind and and uh, joyful and uplifting uh, so that people kind of see that there's something unique and interesting about you. And then you get to share um, those words of hope with them. Uh, so we get to do that in our in kind of our home base. And then in this talks about and then in Judea and Samaria, which is kind of the the region that uh, the people lived in. And so for us, you know, think about like North Texas or um, maybe you work in the Metroplex. And, uh, and so that's kind of your general area. Uh, it could be, you know, maybe you travel a lot for with doing sales or something. And so the state of Texas or uh, Texas and Oklahoma or, or something like that is kind of your area of, uh, of familiarity generally. Um, and so we get to have influence in those areas as well. And so for our church specifically, we got to partner uh, with a church in San Antonio, and I was, a, I was able to be a part of that trip where we got to go and do the same kinds of things that we do here at Greenwood for Outreach, we did there in San Antonio because those people have very similar 
needs and uh, and uh, have a similar culture and um, and so some of the methods that we use to share the gospel here in Parker County can also work there in San Antonio and a lot of times in North Texas and uh, in in our general region okay and so when we think about that we think about people who have an abundance of things um, sometimes now there's also a, a you know a group of people in in Parker County and in our state of Texas who who are in abject poverty and so we want to reach out to both of those groups but we all live in this general idea the general mindset of being uh, Americans in a land of plenty um, where uh, this cultural myth kind of exists that if you work hard and you do th- and, and you kind of advance through life, then you're going to, you're going to be able to get yourself into, you know, any kind of success financially or, or culturally that you want. All it takes is hard work and the right mindset and, and doing the right things and that you can achieve that and that you don't need any help, that you can do it yourself. And so we can speak into that realm by saying that you know, that's, that's actually not true, that we're all broken people. We all have problems and we can um, rely on God to comfort us, to be that solution in our lives instead of this idea of success. And so we can, we can use the same general methods in those areas. Now, when we talk about going to the ends of the earth, you think of a place like Haiti. Um, we, our church is partnered there. I've been able to go there. I've been able to go to Russia, Mexico. Uh, the Pacific Northwest, and uh, and even uh, London. And so in those areas, uh, the gospel is still true. Uh, we still are called to share the good news of Jesus. Um, but sometimes the methods that we do that might actually be a little different. And it's because in different cultural situations, they have different normal um, ways of doing things and a different sort of ideology in their mind about how the world works. And so you have to find the touch points where the gospel can connect to those things. So for instance, in Haiti, those people, I I remember we were there and uh, we, we went up this mountainside where they don't see a lot of white people. And, uh, and so they kept calling out, Oh, white people every time they saw us. And uh, this was an area that's influenced by voodoo and witch doctors, not something you and I have a lot of experience with, but we actually went to an area where they were saying that this guy's leg was, this guy was cursed by a witch doctor and his leg had swollen up and he was suffering and they wanted us to, uh, to pray uh, that God would rescue him from this. And so of course we did. And, uh, and so that unique situation, um, those people there live in a place where they have literally almost nothing. Um, You don't see a lot of large animals, healthy looking animals, because to be honest, if they have those, they're going to eat them because they need that food. And um, and so they are thinking their mindset is I've got to do whatever it takes to get by. Uh, I've got to do whatever it takes to uh, help myself out and, and ensure my own security. And so when we go to Haiti, we need to remember that the gospel applies to that situation as well, that, uh, that the, the Bible talks about how there are no other gods beside the one true God, uh, and that Jesus um, alone can cast out demons. Jesus alone has power to heal. And so that's an important touch point. It's also important to remember that, uh, that there are rules to live by that God gives us, not, not so that he can check off and see, you know, if we were good enough to get into heaven, no one is, only Jesus gets us into heaven, but that we can live by those rules uh, through faith in God. We choose to live that way because Jesus says that, that he's come to give us life, abundant life. And by living according to his words, we'll experience that life. And we can say the same thing in Haiti or in Russia, that it's not about self-preservation or, or cheating to get yourself ahead so that you might have enough, but that God will meet your needs and helping them to understand that. Uh, and, and so there's a unique way that we plug into this verse. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes, comes upon you. You and I have that power. God has given us that power. He has given us a gift to reach people where we are with the message of Christ. 
and we can tell people about him everywhere we go, whether that's in our local community, whether it's in uh, North Texas or the whole state of Texas, or even if we go to the ends of the world. And that message of, of, God, of the gospel, of who Jesus is and how he changes our life, that never changes. That is, that is truth that we can stand on. Uh, but the way that we reach out to people depends on the circumstances that they live in. And so that's something for us to keep in mind as we go far off into the world where people live in very different circumstances than we do, that the gospel is the same here and there, but that we, um, we, we make a, a touch point with those cultures uh, in different ways than we would do here. The same gospel, but different, er- different, tru- um, different themes in that gospel um, touch their culture in ways that are unique to their locality. And so that's important for us to remember. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you and share how God is at work um, through our church here in Parker County uh, in Texas and abroad, even in places like Haiti, through what we do each week uh, in giving part of our tithes and offerings to uh, GVCM, a, uh, a missions organization there in Haiti. And, uh, and so I just want to thank you for that. And I want to pray that you have a wonderful week. I'll be doing that uh, at the conclusion. I hope that we will see you again on Sunday, if not before. Y'all have a wonderful week.